If pain was a color to paint on you, your heart would be the color blue. In high school, my, my art teachers all told me that I would never be an artist, I would never do those things. And I always hate talking about it because I feel really bad for them because they, they had put all these, I, I don't know, I feel like a lot of it was projected. Like uh, an artist needs to be this specific thing. And art is about expression, just like the music that we make. And it's just whatever comes out. It's, it's just up to people to decide if it's something that they want to look at or you know, have in their house. And all people are different. I think, actually, I was, I was sitting at home. Zach had moved to Oregon. He was going to college in, in, in Oregon. And he, he called me at one point and asked me to come join this band that he was playing in. Or one of his friends called me and Zach was in the band, one of my best friends, so I, I flew down there. And I started doing art as, I guess it was just a necessity because we couldn't really afford to hire artists to do things. And even if we could, it's not the artist that you want or the way things you want things to, you know, it's not, not the way you want things to look. So I started doing it and I found all the things that I used to do in school. It was everything I used to draw during class and everything my teachers would yell at me for. And it's kind of funny that it ended up being something that works with the band and it stuck around and I, I really like doing it. I don't know if there's any one specific artist outside of the people that influenced me growing up which was my one of my friends Will Elliott who is still in school to this day. He's studying who knows what but since since he was 16 since I've known him as a kid he's just been so excited about learning and, and writing and just picking up as much as he as he can and he was just a really inspiring person part of it was moving to Portland which has a, a really great art movement there but I, I'd say it goes back to the people that I grew up with more than than artists I mean there are people that are obviously you know, people I look up to I like blue a lot and you see a lot of his stuff in, I guess, South America, all over Europe and South America. I, I guess one thing about the, the, the work that I do, it's, it's all based on time frames because I never really have time to sit down and just make art. So it'll be, hey, can you make an album cover in the next month? And I'll say, yeah, okay, I can. But it, it'll, it, it would be better if I had two months or three months where I was just working on artwork the whole time. It's, it's not something that my brain works with. I, it's, the way my brain works is I have to be hands-on. I have to be practiced in things. Playing music was the same way. It was, I picked up a guitar on our first record with the intent to, to learn it. And it's taken me this long to learn as much as I do and I can't play like Dan Auerbach and I can't play like a lot of those players but I've learned the things that are necessary to what I do. All of the artwork we do is Austin Sellers and myself. Austin Sellers is a graphic designer and he does all the layouts and we just tend to work really easily, really well together. The package, I think Austin had seen something like this before, so he suggested this because the album title was In the Mountain in the Cloud. And he suggested we make this this mountain package. The, the CD before this, we had the, it was Satanic Satanist, and it had a crazy cut out to it. It was a die cut. And I, I really liked doing that sort of thing. I like the die cuts. I think it's a, it's a lot of fun to work with. It's, it's not as practical, I don't think, because c CDs are, to some people, they're just disposable. It's like you buy the CD, you put it on your computer, and then you throw away the package. 
and that's the beauty of vinyl and and those sorts of packages and working with that you get to actually just have more space to work on and that's actually what I was thinking about when I started drawing for this cover we we had this mess of a record it was eight m nine months something like that of just piles of sounds I was having panic attacks and couldn't finish the record I was really really upset all the time just depressed and it just led to this pile up of ideas and when we finished it all we sent it to Andy Wallace one of the great mixers and told him to do whatever he wanted and the only suggestion I had was there's there's so many so much music on this and there are so many tracks you, you can throw things out as you want but think about the White Album. He did a really amazing job mixing this. And when I got it back, I, I just thought about, uh, I guess it would have been, uh, which record was it? What am I thinking? Revolver. We, we talked about Revolver and uh, the White Album. And I was kind of just thinking about everything that went into this record. And that, the, the revolver thing is where the faces came into it, and it looks it looks cool on, on, on the vinyl. I mean, this is a cooler package than the vinyl, but the, the vinyl is actually just how it's supposed to look. It's just the, the picture in the middle of the record spills over. And yeah, it, it just came from the Beatles, just like we like to rip off the Beatles musically, artistically as well. Thank you.